couple of months ago, I did a video called Anatomy of a 40 meter Super Head Receiver. It performed quite well and was designed only for CW reception on the 7 MHz band. I did have some problems with parasitic oscillations, which I described in a second video called Curing Parasitic Oscillations in HF Oscillators or similar. Here's the third video. Although it's pretty messy, the 40 meter receiver has become a transceiver. A superhead transceiver that puts out 2 watts on a segment of 7 MHz. In this video, I'll describe it and give some on-air demonstration. This is the receiver section. Please see the previous two videos for a better description. Apart from the common 11 MHz VFO, the transmitter and receiver are pretty much independent. This die balance mixer here, which is the third used in this transceiver, is the transmit mixer. It mixes the 11 MHz coming from the VFO with a locally generated signal on 4.032 MHz. Almost the same as the IF, but offset by about 800 Hz to provide the required 800 Hz frequency offset. This oscillator is again two transistors, a oscillator and a buffer, but there is a low pass filter at about 4 MHz. The purpose of this filter is to suppress harmonics of the 4 MHz and result in a cleaner signal presented to the input of this mixer. The benefit of doing that is that the output from the mixer is also cleaner, as the mixer isn't wasting its time mixing other products which aren't required. The output from this mixer goes to this double tuned circuit, which further cleans up the signal. It passes signals on 7 MHz and no other frequencies. Then we've got some RF amplification. Three stages comprising of a BC548, a BD139 and another BD139. It's actually a linear amplifier chain from an old double sideband rig. Although CW could technically use class C and be more efficient, this stage worked well enough so I left it as is. Finally, the signal is filtered with this low pass filter. Transmit receive switching is simple, crude and will definitely be upgraded later on. At this stage it's a panel mounted switch, though any serious CW transceiver will use semi break in or break in where it automatically goes from transmit to receive whenever you release the key. Just to run through the block diagram quickly, on receive 7 MHz signals get through the bandpass filter amplified, mixed with the 11 MHz from the local oscillator. The difference is the IF, which is around 4 MHz, that's amplified and filtered, then mixed with another 4 MHz, which the difference being audio can be amplified and sent to the speaker. On transmit, we're also using the 11 MHz VXO signal, another buffer, it's being mixed here with another locally generated 4 MHz signal. That signal though is keyed, when the key is down we've got 4 MHz here, when it's up we don't. So that provides the keying for the transceiver. The mixing provides a difference at 7 MHz, which is filtered, amplified, filtered again, then sent to the antenna with some switching circuitry here. I've just used a panel mounted switch, though eventually I'll be using a relay with some timing circuitry to provide break in keying. As you can hear, it's a good sounding signal, similar to a commercial rig. In this case, I'm keying a buffer, not keying an oscillator, and this means that there's no frequency pulling. It's a very clean sounding note. The transmit receive switching 
It's very crude. I would like to do semi-breaking, so I don't need to flick a switch every time I go from transmit to receive. But it's just a double pole, double throw switch. One section switches the antenna connection from the transmitter to the receiver, and the other section switches in power. Now, the power connection, I've got the receiver powered up all the time, and the transmitter is only powered up when I've flicked the switch to transmit. The benefit of having the receiver powered up all the time is that all the circuitry in the receiver is active, and when I press the key, that provides a side tone. The side tone comes from the keyed 4 MHz oscillator, which is slightly different in frequency. It's offset by about a kilohertz, and that's why you hear the tone. Now, one thing quite nasty about this is if you hear how loud it is, it's definitely way too loud to be wearing these headphones as headphones. So I'll need to do something, some sort of muting circuit possibly, something that might attenuate the signal by maybe 30 or 40 dB. So you still hear a trace of side tone. That's probably a good approach. But this is not finished yet the keying circuitry, tidying up the final amplifier stage, putting it in a box neatly, maybe building it a power amplifier, but even as it stands now, it is quite a practical, good sounding transceiver capable of excellent contacts. When completed, a transceiver like this allows you to enjoy the full potential of QRP, except for possibly the frequency coverage, which doesn't cover the whole CW segment, there's few contacts that you'd miss on this rig compared with any other. If you need more information about QRP equipment and operating, why not check out my book Minimum QRP? Details of it appear on vk3ye.com or you can go into Amazon and search under Minimum QRP. It's under $5 US and almost 1,200 copies have now been sold.